Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. My name's Rebecca and on this channel I go for all things accounting, finance, excellent investment related. So if you do like this kind of stuff, please do consider subscribing and otherwise let's get straight into the video. So I'm going to cover sorting and filtering data, introducing subtotals, find and replace, spell check, and then finally formula validation. So the first thing I'm going to have a look at is how you can show formulas in a spreadsheet. So if I just pop in a little bit of data here. Okay, so if you just look at this information from here, you can see that there are quite a few formulas. So here I've got a formula on the date that you can't see at the minute. But if you look into each individual cell, you can see that there. But if you wanted to have a look at all of the formulas within a cell, all you need to do is just click on the top here go to formulas at the top bar and then go to click on show formulas and that's under this formula order in up here like so and that then will show you all of the formulas that you can see within that excel tab okay so it might be as well that within excel there's been something that doesn't quite look right so if i just remove that there Okay, you can see that Excel's automatically given to you a little bit of an error check. So if there is an error or there's an inconsistency within what you're seeing on the screen, you can see this little arrow next to it and it gives you a little bit of an explanation. So it's saying this is an inconsistent formula. So you can ask for help with this error, ignore this error. But one thing you can do very quickly is just copy the formula from above, like so. So then these will now be consistent. Now, if you want to set your choices for error checking within Excel itself, all you need to do is just go to File, go to Options, and then go to Formulas here. And you can either tick or untick this error checking box here, and then you can click OK. OK, now sometimes you, may, you might see an error called Circular Reference. Now, all a Circular Reference is, is where a cell's formula contains a reference to itself. So it'll look a lot like, like this, but if you want to check for those type of errors, all you need to do is just go to formulas at the top here and then go down to this error checking little box where we've got this formula auditing at the top. And then you can click on circular references here and it'll show you where these circular references are. So it's showing you that D5 and F5 are both referencing themselves. So if we just change this back to 50, that then removes that circular reference. Now, there's also a really great function within Excel called spell check. So if you want to do a spell check very quickly on an Excel spreadsheet, then all you need to do is just go to review at the top here and then go to spelling on the left, where it says, do you want to continue checking at the beginning of the sheet? And if there are no errors there, then it should say you're good to go and you can click OK. So I'm just going to make a deliberate spelling error here and just get that to do a spell check again and you can see here now that is recognized that that is a spelling error so it's suggesting line here so what we can do is click on change and then it says there's no further spell check errors you good to go okay so let's now have a look at the find and replace formula so Find and replace is really good. So to use find, all you need to do is just select the find and select function, or you can click on control F on your keyboard and it'll bring this up. So if you don't want to do it with the control F, all you need to do is just go to home up here and under editing, you've got this find and select. So you just need to go down to replace up here and it'll come up again. So if I just say find line and replace it with lines instead I can select find all so that I can see how many there are and I can check that to what I'm expecting so if I'm expecting there to be say we've got six here and I'm happy and it'll show you there how many cells at the bottom I can just click replace and you'll see that it's changed all of that to say lines instead of line that's find and replace but if you just want to find something you can just search on this find box here find click next and it'll show you where that is or if you click on find all it'll show you where within the tab that information is okay so if we just have a look really quickly at sorting data so you can sort data in numerous ways so if i just select this information here and go to data at the top i can click on filter 
and I can sort it. So there is a little button here that shows that you can sort automatically by oldest to newest or you can sort highest to lowest. So if I just click on this sort button here, I can sort by date, details, credit, debit. So I'm going to click on details. I want to sort on cell values and what I want to do is put that in alphabetical order A to Z. So click on OK and you'll see that that now has changed in alignment with that. So when you're using this you can sort in different ways so you can change that now if you wish to. So if I want to sort on date and I want to sort by newest to oldest that will then change again. But you can see there because we've got formulas in it didn't like that too much so they then reference. So if I just copy these and paste over them so there's no more formulas in there I just select that again and try and do the same thing. So change that to date up here, change it to newest to oldest. There you go. So that's now the newest date to the oldest date. So it's quite useful, that filter tool. The other way that you can filter is just by using these buttons here. So I can sort this from smallest to largest from here. Again, with all of this, A to Z from up here. There. So when I'm using XR, I tend to filter this way as opposed to using that sort, which is a tiny bit more, more lengthy. So let's have a look at introducing subtotals. So if we just select the data there and then go to data at the top and then go to subtotal, this box comes up here. So this first box is the column that you want to be summing. So I want it to go to sum total. And you can select the type of function that you want to so count average minimum maximum but we want some here and then we're just going to make sure that it click we've got the total clicked here and then i'm just going to click ok and you'll see here that a subtotals now appeared under each line in the total box and we then got a grand total here which is just all of the subtotals added together if we check there you go that sums back to one two two now from here, if we want to actually hide the detailed data underneath, we've got these boxes up here. So we're on number three at the moment, which expands everything. If we go to number two, you can see there that that just shows the subtotals that we've got. And if we go on number one, that then is just showing the grand total. So if you're ever asked to hide details, you can hide it by just clicking on one, two or three. So I hope you found that video useful. Please do consider subscribing as always and I shall see you on the next video.